The Pale Horse is, it's actually a building. It's uh, like an old disused pub that these three women live in. We see the story through the mind's eye of, of the central character, Mark, played by Rufus Sewell. There's a, a list of names that are found in a dead lady's shoe. His name finds itself on this list and he doesn't know why, there's a question mark after it. And one by one, the people on the list turn up dead. It's got this incredible sort of paranormal element, so it's also about these three women and whether or not there's something more to them than fortune teller. All the way through, you're kind of wondering who they are and what they're doing. I feel we're like the web that draws all the characters in. It reminded me of a phrase used by Hitchcock, in which he described a script as a nice, nasty little piece. Who do you trust? Can you, can you kind of trust your neighbours and friends? I, I love the way that this story gets into the nooks and crannies of psychology. It's much more of a story about, I think, paranoia, about the way that your mind can play tricks on you, about the power of suggestion. What appealed to me, don't judge me on it, was the idea of this veneer of sophistication, of class, of luxury, is only possible if supported by a vicious, brutal underbelly. That's the thing that keeps it all nice. We get this kind of creeping sense of dread, but also everyone has something kind of rotten. And I think those three women bring that out. What are our powers? Do they practice the dark arts? People don't know what's happening and are intrigued to know what's happening behind our front door. The Pale Horse is a mystery hidden within an enigma, uh, hidden within a kind of paranoid nightmare. It has a viciousness to it, a dry, witty nastiness, which appealed to me. <laughs>